This is chapter three, section six, specific heat. This is part of the chapter on matter and energy. Previously, we discussed different forms of matter and different kinds of energy. Specific heat is a concept that allows us to talk about one of the ways that matter and energy interact with one another. Before we get to the formal definition of specific heat, I want to ground it in a more everyday understanding of these concepts, right? So most of us understand that if you take a substance or an object and you add heat to it, its temperature is going to increase, okay? Most of us also understand that different types of substances will respond to that heat differently. Some change their temperature quite a bit, some only change their temperature a little. So specific heat is a property that describes how much a substance changes temperature when you add heat to it. Here we have the formal definition. Okay? In words, specific heat is defined as the quantity of heat that raises the temperature of exactly one gram of a substance by exactly one degree Celsius. Okay? In the form of an equation, we have the specific heat here, sometimes abbreviated as SH, and this is equal to the heat that you put into the object divided by the mass of the object multiplied by the temperature change of the object. Okay. If you're not familiar with this symbol, that's all right. This is a Greek letter delta, and it refers to the change in whatever variable it comes in front of. So in this case, for instance, you have some initial temperature, and then you add heat to the object, and the object heats up, its temperature increases, and then it has some final temperature. Okay, But it's not either the initial or the final temperature that goes into the formula. It's the change. It's the difference between the two. Okay, So that's what this delta indicates. For H2O, we can see that the specific heat is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Okay? What this means, again, is that if you take a gram of water and you add a calorie of energy to it, its temperature is going to increase by one degree Celsius. Okay? And we also know that one calorie is the same as 4.184 joules. And so we could say that the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. It's the same property, just in a different unit. Now, despite the similar names, it's important to remember that specific heat is not a kind of heat. These are completely different concepts. Okay? Heat is a kind of energy. And really, it's a, a measure of the total kinetic energy of all of the particles in a system. Okay? Heat is measured in the typical energy units, either joules or calories. Specific heat, however, is a property of matter. Okay? It's a measure of how much the temperature of a system changes when heat is added to it. So you need to understand heat in order to understand specific heat, but it's in a, a distinct, a separate concept. Okay? And the unit for specific heat is also a little more complicated. It's joules per gram degree Celsius or calories per gram degree Celsius. And those come directly from the formula that we saw on the preceding page, right? You have heat divided by mass times temperature change. Here we have a table with some specific heats for different substances. And you might notice that these are all pure substances, right? You have elements up here like aluminum or copper. Uh, and down here you have compounds such as ammonia or water. In this course, we're not really going to talk about how a uh, mixture responds to the addition of heat because it can get very complicated. The composition of a mixture can vary. You can change how much of the different components you put into it. And so it's harder to talk about how it responds to heat. For these pure substances, however, in this table, you can see that there are two different units given. There's calories per gram degree Celsius and joules per gram degree Celsius, right? We already saw this with uh, water, how it can be expressed in two different units. Okay. One other thing to look at this and take away is that this number represents an amount of energy, right? It's an amount of energy that it takes to increase a gram of this substance by one degree Celsius. So for water, as we mentioned already, it takes one calorie to heat it up by one degree. But for something like iron, it takes only a little more than a tenth of a calorie to heat it up by one degree. So in some sense, it's much easier to heat up iron than it is to heat up water. It takes less energy to cause the temperature to increase. And so all of these numbers that are less than the specific heat of water, they're less than one, they all require less energy to produce the same temperature change. Okay? And this is a particular characteristic of metals, for instance. Metals are, will change their temperature quite a bit with only a little bit of heat. So here we have an example of the kind of problem that you might get, right? 
So this, what is the specific heat if 24.8 grams of a metal absorbs 275 joules of energy and the temperature rises from 20.2 degrees Celsius to 24.5 degrees Celsius? Okay, this is a very straightforward specific heat question. They give you all the information that you need and they're just asking you to put it into the formula and find the specific heat, right? So step one, state the given and needed quantities, right? These, this is generally the first step that we start with. So we know that we're talking about uh, 24.8 grams of metal. We know that it started at 20.2 degrees Celsius, and we know that it ended at 24.5 degrees Celsius. And the thing that caused that temperature change was 275 joules of energy, okay? So once we see a problem like this, where we're dealing with some mass of a substance and there's a temperature change and some energy involved, that is a good indication that the concept that we need is specific heat, right? And in particular, we're gonna need the heat equation to connect all of these variables together. And so that's step two, right? The heat equation, SH, remember, specific heat, and this equals heat divided by mass times delta T, okay? So the question is asking, what is the specific heat? So we need to find this, which means we have to know heat, we have to know mass, and we have to know delta T. So we know mass already from the problem, right? 24.8 grams, and we know heat, that's the energy, 275 joules. So really the only thing that we have left to calculate is the temperature change. And again, the T or the delta T really that goes into the formula, it's not this temperature and it's not this temperature, right? It's the difference between the two. So that's what we calculate as delta T. It's the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So 24.5 minus 20.2 equals 4.3 degrees Celsius, okay? So now that we have these three pieces of information, we can put them directly into the formula. We get specific heat equals heat. That's the 275 joules divided by mass, 24.8 grams, multiplied by delta T, 4.3 degrees Celsius. So you put all this in your calculator and you'll get, well, you'll get some number and then you look at the significant figures and you round it to two significant figures because that's what uh, the temperature change had, right? This has three significant figures, so does the heat, but the temperature change, even though those measurements were taken to three significant figures, when you subtract them, you're only left with two significant figures. Okay. And so that limits your answer to two significant figures here, 2.6 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay. And again, the unit that comes out of this depends on the units that you put in because the energy was given in terms of joules, the unit that we get is going to be in terms of joules. Here we see another kind of question that you might get on specific heat. It's a little bit more complicated, but not much. It just requires a little bit of algebra. Uh, it says, if you add 55.0 calories of energy to a piece of gold with a mass of 17.0 grams, how much will its temperature increase? And note, the specific heat of gold is 0 0.0308 calories per gram degree Celsius. Okay? So once you see all this information, I mean, especially it gives you the specific heat right here, so it's a pretty good bet that you're going to need the heat equation. This is an equation that you need to remember. Okay? You're not going to be given this on the exam. So the specific heat equals the heat that you add to the object divided by the mass of the object multiplied by the temperature change of the object, right? But in this case, since it's asking us what will the temperature increase be, well, we need to solve for delta T, okay? So we need to do a little bit of algebra, bring delta T up to the left side, uh, the specific heat down to the, on the right side on the bottom. And so we're gonna get delta T equals heat divided by mass times specific heat, okay? And then it's just a matter of plugging things in, right? So the heat is 55.0 calories. That's three significant figures. The mass is 17.0 grams. It's also three significant figures. And the specific heat it tells us is 0.0308 calories per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so this is also three significant figures. So our answer is definitely going to be to three significant figures. Delta T equals, if you put this into your calculator, what you get is 105 
degrees Celsius. Really, it's 105.0420168, but you round it to three significant figures, and it's 105 degrees Celsius. Okay? Again, this unit comes from working out the units here. Right, This calorie here cancels this calories, this gram cancels this grams, and then you have 1 over 1 over degrees Celsius, and so the degrees Celsius comes back on top, and that gives you your temperature change. Okay. Now keep in mind two things. This is the temperature change, not the final temperature. So if it started at zero degrees, then it ended at 105 degrees, right? It rose in temperature by over 100 degrees Celsius. That's a big rise. Okay. If it started at 20 degrees, then it would end at 20 plus 105 or 125 degrees. Okay. This is the change, the difference between the initial and the final temperature. It is not the final temperature itself. Another interesting thing about this is if you put the same amount of energy into the same amount of water, it would only increase in temperature by about three degrees Celsius, okay? Because for water, this number would be 1.0308 would be replaced by one calorie per gram degree Celsius, and so 55 divided by 17 would be 3.23. So again, metal, like gold, increases in temperature much more for a given amount of heat than water does, okay? And that's due to its lower specific heat.